Salut, c'est Géraldine, bienvenue sur Comme une Française TV, Sound French, Even to the French. In French, a comic book is called une bande dessinée, une bande dessinée, or also called une BD. Full of des cases, des cases, we say une case, panels and des bulles, des bulles, une bulle, bubbles. Famous painter Pablo Picasso once allegedly said in a Parisian cafe, la seule chose que je regrette, c'est de ne jamais avoir fait de bande dessinée. La seule chose que je regrette, c'est de ne jamais avoir fait de bande dessinée. The only thing I regret is never having made comics. Well, to compensate for his non-comic book making in the cultural landscape, French and especially Belgian writers and artists got around to creating some famous, successful, funny and smart new comics. So come with me, let's take a look at the shbam, pow, blop and whiz of the French comics. The ubiquitous international success and movie adaptations. You know them, they're everywhere and iconic of this Belgian and French wave of comic books. I'm talking about, first of all, Tintin. His adventures around the world with his dog, the new animated Spielberg blockbuster, which was pretty good to be honest. If you like it, check out the earlier animated series. It made my Wednesday afternoons for a long time. Tintin is really basic. Les Schtroumpfs, Les Schtroumpfs. Les Schtroumpfs had to deal with their 3D animated movie too, but it was pretty bad. They're small and blue and called the Smurfs in translation. The Smurf albums I have back at home are old and used from hours of reading them on my carpet with my dad and my brother, so I recommend reading them. They're much better than the movie or the animated series. Belgian and French comic books have always had a close relationship with the US ever since Tintin en Amérique. The most famous cowboy here is Lucky Luke. Lucky Luke, l'homme qui tire plus vite que son ombre. L'homme qui tire plus vite que son ombre. The man who shoots faster than his own shadow and his many many spin-off TV adaptations, movies and toys. I can talk about French comics megastar without mentioning Asterix as well. With his friend Obelix, their Asterix et Obelix, they have adventures all around France, Europe and the world. And the comics make jokes about so much of French culture that I have to restrain myself from using them in every video on Commune Française TV. The animated movies are great with terrific songs. The live action movies are a hit and miss. Though Asterix Mission Cléopâtre is a must watch and the recent 3D animated movie Asterix et le Domaine des Dieux is really good. They even have a theme park near Paris. It's a very very good way to spend a day. If you're in France in summer, go there. But besides Asterix and Obélix, other classic French comics let us follow two men having adventures together. Two men and their adventures. Now, these ones may not be as internationally famous, but they're still culturally very significant in the history of French-speaking comic books. Black and Mortimer are two British gentlemen. Blake is an English spy and Mortimer is a Scottish physicist. They save the world in various ways against their faux colonel, Ulrich. In a blend detailed and realistic depictions of places like London or Egypt, or and science fiction plots really good and twists all around the place. The series used to be published in Le Journal de Tintin, Le Journal de Tintin, a weekly comic magazine where Tintin was published as well. Nowadays, each new album is an event in bookstores and a go-to gift for Father's Day. Their younger counterparts in adventures are Spirou et Fantasio. Spirou et Fantasio. Like Black et Mortimer, they were created in the 1950s, but they had their own magazine, Le Journal de Spirou, Le Journal de Spirou. Their characters are really well known, but people usually never read their full albums. What all French people know, however, are the other characters in Spirou's world, that they got their own spin-off. I'm talking of, of course about Le Marsupilami, Le Marsupilami, this black spotted yellow animal from South America with its long and strong flexible tail. He had a massive success with plenty of his own comics, merchandising, TV adaptation, and a quite good and funny movie in 2000. 2012. Which leads us to another of Spiro's friends in French comedy comics. Gaston Lagaffe, it's the opposite of a hero. He's literally called 
Blunder, Gaston la gaffe. The character is shown working at Le Journal Le Spirou, where he hangs around the office making photocopies and creating musical instruments. He's creative, but mostly dumb and extremely lazy, who he's quite relatable, to be honest, and everyone likes this series. What's funny is also that on the total opposite side of the spectrum, André Franquin, André Franquin, the actual creator of Spirou, Marsupilami, Gaston and the Friends, is also responsible for Idée Noire, Idée Noire, a comic strip with really, really dark humor that he drew to find expression and the absurdity of life. It's lesser known, but it's a really, really good read for adults anyway. Absurdity isn't always sad or depressing, though. You can also turn it into comedy. And that's what Gottlieb does in La Rubrique à Brac. Oh, I love La Rubrique à Brac. The name is a play on word with La Rubrique, the rubric, La Rubrique, and Un Brique à Brac, Un Brique à Brac, a rummage. The comic itself is a series of stories and advice and reflections with smart jokes and tons of characters. Lots of things falling on Isaac Newton's head, fairy tales revisited and how to find out if your friend is actually a mutant. Spoiler, he probably has superpowers if he knows how to fall back a roadmap on the first try. That's a very famous joke from uh, Gottlieb. Gottlieb also founded his own magazines, where one can find other works from other French artists. For example, Franck Margerin and his character Lucien in the 70s. What's interesting is that Lucien depicts a part of French culture that isn't really shown anywhere else. Lucien is a young hard rock enthusiast and a biker, trying to get by with his friends by the pinball machine in the Parisian suburbs. He would be in his element in a song by French singer Renault, for example. More comic recommendations. This rich history is, of course, still alive today, and new series are born every year, every week, every day, more and more in more and more styles, which is really awesome. In Grenoble, Magazin BD are going well, and that's good to see. I highly recommend that you go to your local bookstore in France if you can, or abroad to discover new stories. In this episode, I wanted to cover the big basics that we all read. Now, having very close friends who are massive fans of comics, I couldn't not give you just that. So I made them on your behalf and asked them to give you a list of super good French comics from the past and from now. As they came up with a huge list, I can't give you on camera, it's far too big. It would make a full episode. Who knows, maybe I will make it later. For now, you will find the list on the blog below the video. You will find Mario Montaigne, Manuel Arsenet, Jacques Tardy, Marjan Satrapi, Enki Bilal, Loisel, Penelope Bajur, Riyad Satouf, and lots of other ones. Et toi, have you ever read Belgian or French comic books? Do you have your own recommendation to add to the list? Come on, share your experience in French if you dare in the comments below the video. We can all learn from your tips. The comment section is the best place to start discussion and ask me questions. If you like this video, share it with your friends on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, anything you want. Help me spread the word about Comin Française. Merci. Do you love France? Dream of sounding French? Even the French? Learn how with me, Geraldine, on communefrances.com and subscribe to my email updates for exclusive tips on real life in France every Tuesday, plus an exclusive video lesson, introduce yourself in French. And it's free! Merci for watching Comin Frances TV, sound French even to the French. Allez, salut!